Hi, this is Professor Santiago. In this series of videos, I'll give you an introduction of the Laplace transforms. Um, the Laplace transforms comes in handy when you analyze the behavior of circuits consisting of resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Without Laplace transforms, you need to solve differential equations uh, using calculus. And it's relatively straightforward, but a little bit more complex because you have to use derivatives and integrals. In the Laplace domain approach, you have the advantage of using simpler algebraic techniques. Here I'll cover the Laplace transform, which usually covers properties of circuit behavior you normally don't see when you use a calculus. Um, in my new book that's going to be published in either April of 2013 or uh, May of 2013, I cover basically three chapters involving the Laplace transforms. The first chapter that you come into play when you hit the Laplace transform is chapter 16, entitled Predicting Circuit Behavior with Laplace Transform Techniques. Here I cover what poles and zeros are when you uh, develop the Laplace transform uh, transfer function and then you I'll show you how to switch between the different domains between the time and the Laplace or S domain and then finally I'll work out some uh, circuit output response in these series of videos some examples in chapter 17 I implement various techniques of circuit analysis where you take the basic device and connection constraints and describe them in the S domain uh, I also use voltage and current divider techniques uh, just as we used it in resistor only circuits here you use impedances to describe the relationship of voltage and current for capacitors and inductors as well as resistors and then I use the circuit analysis techniques uh, such as the superposition, Thevenin equivalent, uh, node voltage analysis and mesh current analysis and perform these uh, techniques in the S or Laplace domain. Finally, in chapter 18, I focus on the frequency response. Here I talk about different types of filters and how are they described in their frequency response and this basically in terms of Bode diagrams. Then later on in the book, it describes circuits, how to create a low pass, high pass, and band pass filters as well as band reject filters. So these filters are important because let's say when you hear your favorite music coming from various instruments and very melodic voices, you have unique sounds that you hear consists of many frequencies. So for example in a stereo system, you can adjust the low frequency and high frequency sounds by adjusting the stereo equalizers. And then with equalizers you can adjust the volume for a specific band of frequencies relative to others and they are often used to boost the guitar bass for bass hungry speakers as well as bringing out the vocals of your favorite singer. Now using with a combination of resistors, capacitors, and inductors you can select or reject a range of frequencies. Consequently you can pick out those frequencies that you want to cut or boost and for audio applications you can adjust the bass, treble, or mid-range frequencies to get the sound quality you like best. In addition, you can also find a wide range of applications of the frequency re response and filtering in uh, communications control and instrumentation systems. Now let's start with an introduction to the Laplace transform. Here I'll just start off with a brief overview with some kind of flow chart. Um, and then uh, hopefully the overview will explain why we use the Laplace transforms. And then I'll cover the basic definition of the Laplace transform. Okay, let's start off with an overview. First of all, um, in the old ways of doing things in the solving a differential equation, this is usually referred to as a time domain. And then you use basically calculus methods to help uh, solve and find the response waveform that's the solution to this differential equation here. And uh, all this is referred as to a time domain approach to solving a differential equation. Uh, just briefly, a classical uh, calculus technique involves finding the solution to a homogeneous differential equation, then the solution to a particular input, and then you add the homogeneous and particular solutions. Once you have those two uh, solutions, 
and you add them, you apply the initial distance because you have arbitrary constants when you hit the solution for a homogeneous uh, differential equation. And this is what we refer to as the calculus approach, which is covered in my book in chapters 13 and 14 before I hit the Laplace transform. Now in the Laplace transform technique, we take this differential equa equation and use the Laplace transform so we can solve the problem in what we call as the Laplace or S domain. Here it's going to involve algebraic methods when we want to particular output from the circuit. And we call this the response transform solution. And then you use the inverse Laplace transform to uh, get back to your time domain solution. So here you have the two basic uh, approaches where you switch between the time domain and the S domain where the time domain involves calculus techniques and the S domain basically involves algebraic techniques. And that's it and an overview of how, why we use the Laplace transform versus using the classical techniques of um, solving a differential equation. So uh, we'll start off with this tutorial with signal waveforms and transforms. I'll start off with the definition of the Laplace transforms. Not to do too mathematical detail associated with it. We just want to use what the definition is and then apply it. Then I have three examples here. I'm not sure if I can get through all of them, but I'll just uh, maybe example one and then maybe another video with examples two and three. So let's start off. Uh, Laplace transformation, the definition, and here's the definition of the Laplace transform. It takes a time domain signal and converts it into the Laplace domain or S domain. Here we're integrating from 0 to infinity, taking this function in the time domain where t is a time variable of real numbers, and we're multiplying by this complex exponential and integrating it from 0 to infinity, and out pops the uh, f of s which is describes f of t in the Laplace domain. And s here is a complex n number consisting of a real part uh, sigma plus j omega. So it takes this uh, real numbered function and converts it into a function that's described in the Laplace domain. So here's our first example where we want to show that our function is a unit step consisting of u of t. We want to show that when you perform the Laplace transform of this, you have 1 over s. So the Laplace transform of a step is 1 over s. Basically, you just apply the definition of the Laplace transform shown here, integrating from 0 to infinity, um, f of t e to the minus st dt. Now we take our function u of t and just substitute it for f of t as shown here. But we note that u of t is equal to 1 between 0 and infinity. So hence I can just uh, remove u of t and define this uh, integral going from 0 to infinity e to the minus st dt. Now hopefully we know what the integral of a comp complex exponential in this case is, and it's basically uh, a complex exponential with some scalar factor. In this case, it's whatever in front of the t, which is a minus 1 over s. So we're integrating this from 0 to infinity. And just to show you and remind you that s is a complex number, I just substitute uh, s for sigma plus j omega in both places here in the numerator, or in the exponent in the numerator of the exponential and s in the denominator here. So when you integrate it from 0 to infinity, we substitute the upper limit of infinity, and we see that this integral is equal to 0, and e to the minus s0 in the lower limit is equal to 1, and then you have the minus minus cancels out to give you a plus, which basically gives us 1 over s. And that's it. So the Laplace transform of a unit step is 1 over s.